If you've been following me for a while, you know that I love going to the thrift store and taking items that someone did not need or want anymore and recreating them into a whole new way. Today's video I have for you really cool and exciting thrift store flips and I cannot wait to show you. Headed to the Salvation Army on this rainy cold morning and I found this beautiful frame. It's not too, too beautiful right now, but it has so much potential. It is really thick and is really real wood. I loved it. I'm going to re remove the inside of it and I realized there's a lot of cardboard in there. I gave it a good wipe and then I decided to sand it down just a little bit. It felt a little grimy and just rough to the touch. So I sanded it down just to smooth it out and remove any grime that it may have. Wiped it again really, really well. Now I want to place this planked board that I got at the Target Dollar Spot. It was $3. I removed the back from it, sanded down any remaining piece of it. Then I'm going to take one of the cardboards that was already measured in size to the inside of the frame. I'm going to trace it on the board and I'm going to cut it using my miter saw. Once I had it cut, I want to make sure it fits and it fit perfect. I'm going to use a combination of permanent glue as well as hot glue to place that board in first. Then I'm going to hot glue all the pieces of cardboard that came with it except for one right on top of it. Because of the board that I placed at the bottom is a lot thicker than the glass it had, I did have to add one more piece of cardboard, but this one's thinner, one that I had here at home from a piece of box. And then that way it's still going to clip and be very snug. Once I have everything in place, I'm just going to give it a two coats of Waverly Chalk Bean and the White. I also want to paint these little tiny, they look like little legs that I got at the crafting aisle section at Dollar Tree. I'm going to place some masking tape with the sticky side up and I'm going to place them right on there. This is going to help keep them straight and not move around on me while I paint them white. And I'm using again Waverly Chalk Bean in the white so that way it matches the tray. So what we're going to create is a little decor riser, a little jewelry tray or whatever we want to use it for. Now that it's nicely dry, I'm going to bring in one of these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. These are so cool and so fun. This one has a very girly vintage look. I'm going to cut it in strips of about maybe about an inch and a half. And then I'm going to start placing it all around the rim of the tray. And you just want to find something that's hard enough where you can start rubbing it on. And what you want to do is you want to pull on the plastic and rub kind of like at the same time until the transfer is completely transferred. It's really easy and fun. And remember, you can cut these transfers as you need it. I am so loving how this is turning out. It's so cute. Okay, so now that it is completely on there, you can seal it if you want with a top coat. I don't, I'm not going to do it because I don't think it needs it, but you certainly can if you want. I'm going to attach the little legs again using a combination of permanent glue and hot glue just to give me a quick dry as well as a permanent hold. And then that's it for this one. I got to say it's one of my favorites from today. Look how stunning this looks. That rub-on transfer is so beautiful. I love the way it attached. has a little bit of distressed look. Gorgeous. While at the thrift store, I also found this beautiful square black frame. It is very sturdy once again, and it just had just a perfect look for what I'm thinking. I'm going to remove the price tag, of course, and then I'm going to remove the center, which was stapled. I just pretty much pressed on it and then removed it. There was a couple of staples left over. I just removed it with some tools. No big deal. Then it's time to bring in some more paint. Now, this time I'm going to give it one coat of Waverly Chalk Bean in the white as a base coat, almost as a primer. And then I'm going to use some of this Highland Blue Milk Paint by Rust-Oleum, and I'm going to do two coats of that. It is gorgeous. This color is stunning. I love the way it looks. Once it was completely dry, I'm going to take my sanding block from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to sand it in the direction of the grain. This is going to allow some of that black and white to pop through in the distressed look. 
when I sand down chalk paint or milk paint is very dusty. So before I start just brushing it, I like to sometimes just use my vacuum to remove most of it and then use my brush to remove it. And a rag too you can use. Look how pretty that looks. I love it. All right, we're going to flip it over and we're going to bring in a doily from Dollar Tree. You can find these there all the time and i'm going to start stapling it making sure that i'm tugging lightly here and there to make sure that it's going to be nice and straight in the center i am using my electric stapler but you can certainly use a manual one then i did have to just kind of pound it a little bit with the hammer to make sure they're nicely on there and not going to scratch any surface i'm going to use my rotary cutter just to cut off the excess doily because that way it's going to look nice and professional and just clean and i think using the cutter was much easier then i'm going to put a couple of these sawtooth hooks to the back and that's it look how pretty it could be used as an earring uh hanger or it could be used just as a decor i love it this one is stunning again a very durable heavy piece it's a mirror slash picture holder slash coat holder <laughs> It, it does it all. All right, so I brought it home and the first thing I wanna do is remove that mirror because we're not gonna need it. Once it was removed, I did wanna keep the two little side ones, but I did remove the hooks just temporarily because we're gonna bring them back at the end. We're gonna give it a good sand and a good clean just to make sure that it is clean and soft even though it was pretty good shape. In the little two picture sections, I wanna make that into a very textured decor piece. So I'm gonna remove them and then I'm gonna bring in a stencil. This is a reusable stencil that I've had. It has the shape of flowers. I'm gonna use the spackle and paint mixture. Now, if I would've had spackle by itself, would've worked even better, but I didn't. So I just used what I had on hand. But if you have spackle, that would, that would work way better without the paint. I'm just gonna spread it. That way we're creating a raised stencil look. Once it was fully dry, it is nice and textured. I'm gonna replace them right back in and to where they came and make sure it is tightened. I'll do that on the same, on both sides. And then I'm just gonna paint the whole thing. I ended up having to give it three and a half coats of the Waverly Chalk Paint in the white. I thought that was, yikes, <laughs> three and a half because it just needed a little bit of touching here and there. But I also did the back of it so it took a little while in between coats but once it was done it was beautiful i'm gonna use my palm sander and i'm just gonna sand down the edges i want this to have a little bit of a farmhouse look so i will distress it but as you know you do not have to do this step you can certainly leave it just as it was i dusted it off and make sure it's nice and clean i wanted to bring out the texture on the side so i'm going to take some of this waverly antiquing wax and i'm just going to start dry brushing it on top of the design the problem here was that I added way too much. It became dingy and a little bit too brown and I just didn't like the look. So then I took some white paint and tried to fix it. But the problem was that I used the same brush that I used with the antiquing wax and it was just making it worse almost. So then I just went to the original brush that I used for painting the entire piece and this really lightened it up and added just enough antiquing wax that I wanted. So for the center portion where the mirror was, I wanna add some crafting chicken wire. Now you can use real one, but when it comes to like crafting and decor, I like using the crafting one. It's a lot more manageable and easy to work with. I'm gonna use my wire cutters just to kind of cut off any excess. And again, my electric stapler to make sure it is stapled in place. And again, I'm tugging here and there to make sure that it is nice and straight in the center. I've been because there's so many pointy little wires in the back, I'm gonna take some of this drop cloth that I had on hand. I'm gonna cut a piece, it's about two inches wide, and I'm gonna hot glue it all around the edge, making sure that it's covering all of the little pointy parts, but also not showing in the front. Friends, I would love to connect with you on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. I have those links down below in the description box when you're done watching. I love for you to check them out. And we're just about done. I am going to place those hooks right back on it. I contemplated spray painting them, but to be honest with you, they were in such a good shape and I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> so I just left them the way they were, but I think this turned out absolutely stunning. I love the new updated farmhouse look and I love that you can still place a little picture inside right in the center.
this next board already looks like a picture frame, but on, honestly, it is not. This one was part of a leftover top portion of a old fashioned sewing machine. That's a long title. <laughs> I kept it because I just thought it would make a great piece for the wall. I cleaned it very well and painted it with some white chalk paint. Once it was dry, I'm going to take this polka dot white and blue fabric. I am going to cut up a piece just for the center and that's what we're going to use to cover that hole in the center. We're going to staple it once again using my electric stapler and we're going to do it all around tugging here and there to make sure it is nice and straight. Because the edge of this frame is so thick, I thought it would look great if I added a stencil. So I created one using my Cricut and I used one of my favorite worship songs and I'm just gonna place it all around the edge. Didn't have a light blue that I wanted. So I am going to just mix a darker blue with some white and just mix it until I have a nice color tone that I'm looking for. I'm gonna then start stenciling it with a makeup sponge. I added a rope to the back so that we can hang this and that's it. This one is so pretty. I love it. I love that it has that worship song and it's a very subtle stencil and I think it's so pretty. This next one is not so much of a frame, although it is framed. It's more of a box and it is real wood. It is stunning. It has that planked look, but it has that diagonal look that I really thought was very unique. I have nothing to do with it except painting it. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna add some white chalk paint by Rust-Oleum and I'm gonna give it a couple of coats. Once it was dry, I'm gonna bring in this thrifted belt and I'm gonna cut out two pieces. I want them to be equal size because these are gonna be my handles. I don't remember the size of them, but I think about five inches or so. I'm measuring, making sure that I have enough for two nice handles. Then I'm gonna place them on each side. I'm gonna use upholstery tags that I got on Amazon and I do have them on my Amazon store. So if you wanna check it out, the link to my Amazon store is always in the description box. So check it out. Once I had the first one, I did place the second one, making sure that I'm measuring on both sides to make sure that it is nice and centered. And that's it for this one. Such an easy upgrade, but I love this tray. It could be a serving tray, a decorative tray, you name it. It's definitely one of my favorites from today. But as always, I would love to know which one is your favorite. I truly cannot choose. I love them all. I have another video here for you. Check it out. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.